Hey, what's happening, guys? Uh, today we're going to take a look at this lovely uh, function generator here that I bought from AliExpress. It is basically the cheapest full-featured function generator that I could find on AliExpress. And I will show you here. This is it. It is uh, $45.69. And it is called the QLS 2800S. I bought the 2 megahertz version. It's also available in a uh, 5 megahertz version. But 2 megahertz is fine for us to play with. So before we get into that, um, yesterday, or yes, two days ago video, where we took a look at the, uh, the wireless power supply thing from Juntech, apparently I forgot to uh, put in the part where I showed... The ripple on the scope is about 500 millivolts at 4 amps. So, and it was proportional as the amperage current went up and down. The ripple went up and down as well. So, there's that. All right. So, let's move on to this. This, like I said, is just about the cheapest full-featured function generator you can find. And, you know, a function generator is, is something that you're eventually going to need. You don't have to have one to start out with, but you, you definitely need something that, you know, you can output a square wave from. You know, you can you can whip out yourself a little 555 timer, no trouble. But eventually you get further enough into electronics, you're going to need a function generator because there's some different things that you're going to want to do. So there's all types of function generators available. From analog function generators, which is what we have up there, the old GWS Instec. You know, and then uh, you could spend a, a crap load of money and get yourself, you know, a dual output arbitrary waveform, you know, 60 megahertz function generator for $500. But here's, here's the thing. If you need that kind of functionality, it's probably going to be for your work. So they're probably going to buy one for you and you're not going to have to worry about it. If you're doing something for home, you know, a few megahertz, 10 megahertz maybe, 20 megahertz mostly, I mean tops, be able to output square wave, sine wave, triangle wave, will get you through just about everything you need. So that's why I wanted to get something nice and cheap to show you guys and take a look at how it works. So that's what we're going to do. So here's the front panel of the QLS 2800. It's a single output. It also has a uh, uh, frequency counter function, which is rather nice, and it's also got a TTL out. We're not going to get into that today, but it's there. So you can see here, we're outputting a square wave at 1 kilohertz at 1 volt amplitude, or 2 volts peak to peak, with a 50% duty cycle. And if we take a look over here at the scope... You know, that is exactly what you'll see. So, it's going pretty good. Whoops. That's in the wrong place. That's better. Now, what I like about this is it has your three waveforms up here. You can press the waveform button and rotate the knob, but you can just hit right here. Boom. As you can see, we've gone to a sine wave Did I miss it? hit the wrong button there we go triangle wave and it's pretty good now if we come over here and hit frequency we can then turn this rotary encoder and adjust our frequency so now we're at 20 kilohertz and then you have these little cursor selectors right here so you can come over here and select which number you want to change. So we can go 100 kilohertz now. 200, 300, 400, 500, 500 kilohertz square wave at 1 volt peak to peak. Come over here, take a look at the scope. And there you can see we're at 500 kilohertz. 1.01 volts peak to peak looking pretty good so that is uh, quite impressive if you ask me for 40 bucks <laughs> you weren't getting anything like this a couple years ago for 40 bucks 
Now it also has a sweep mode. We have start, we have end. Let's turn our sweep mode on and see what happens. There we go. Trying to get this in here. You can see the frequency changing. Very cool. Okay. So here I have it set for its maximum uh, 2 megahertz sine wave, 1 volt peak to peak, which you can see there on the scope screen. Now, a good way to check out how, I don't want to call it accurate, but how, um, what's the word I'm looking for? How clean of a waveform, how, what the signal integrity of the thing is, is to put it at its maximum and look at a square wave. That's going to tell you. So let's get this to pop in here. All right. So what you're seeing here is a little bit of jitter on that square wave. Now it's not bad, but it's not great either. And that's that's you know when you're pushing the limits of a piece of test equipment, that's something that you're going to see, and that's just a good way to check. So let's go here. We'll take uh, take the frequency, take it down to one megahertz. We'll take it down 900 kilohertz, 800, 700, 600, 500. You can see it, it's it's starting to fade there a little bit. That's a DDS um, artifact thing, basically, when you're doing the direct digital uh, synthesis. See so if we change our choir mode here. We're in high res. If we just go to normal, yeah, see that? We go to average, take a look at it like that. In average mode, it looks fine, but you know, you can't be always using average. Anyway, so. It's working rather well, I think. And like I said, for 45 bucks, this is a pretty uh, full-featured frequency generator. Let's uh, let's test the uh, the counter function of it next. Okay, so I've got it hooked up to the uh, GWS Instec, which is outputting a square wave at about 994 hertz, which is as close as I can get that analog. to one kilohertz. So that's coming in pretty good there. Let's take it up to uh, 10.11. 10.16 is close enough, I mean. There's 99.3. And we'll take it up to its fastest speed, which is 2.074 megahertz. Hey. That's close enough, right? That's awesome. Now that is in the test frequency, which is the frequency counter mode. If you put it in the counter mode, what's going to happen is it is just going to count pulses. And there's nothing wrong with that. That is a very useful function as well. So very cool. I like this. Let's take it apart and see what's inside. It is incredibly light, so I don't think we're going to see too much inside of it. All right, looks like... Four screws will do the trick. So we'll get them out and see what's inside here. I bet you it's a one board solution with maybe a little daughter board for that front LCD panel. I'd be shocked if there's anything else. Long screws. That one really doesn't want to come out. Apologize, this is a, a 
the most thrilling video. But when you've never taken something apart and you're doing it for the first time, you gotta be a little bit careful so that you don't force anything too much and break it. There we go. So yeah, we got two boards. The first board is simply a, a control board for the LCD panel. It's a little control I see there. And then we have the second board, which is our, our DDS board. And it's using an Altera Max 2 FPGA to do the business. Zoom in here, you guys can get a look at that. That's pretty cool. So that is a wonderful, low-cost solution for making yourself something like this. And, you know, FPGA is all done with logic circuits, so nothing but gates. There's a uh, 12 megahertz oscillator. There's another one. I can't quite see what it is down there. Very nice, low-cost solution going on in here. I like it. Definitely, I think, worth the money. So there she is. Put it back together here. Looking good. Hope you guys enjoyed this little video. On the QLS 2800S, just about the cheapest full featured function generator you can find out there from China. If it's not cheap enough for you, I may have something else coming up kind of a homebrew thing in the future but hey check this out I'll put a link to it down below got my uh, got my seal of approval I like it 45 bucks free shipping not bad all right if you guys enjoyed this I hope you'll give me a thumbs up feel free to comment share and don't forget to subscribe big thanks to all the patrons big thanks to you guys for watching that's it I'm out peace